Hi everyone. Welcome to our seminar. Um, our seminar is about the LGBTQ plus of first, and we're just going to be talking about acceptance and just how to be a team that's uh, accepting to everyone, especially the LGBTQ plus community. So I'm Annabelle Freeze. I use her pronouns. I'm the more than robots captain on the Firebase, and I'll be no, I am a junior this year. I'm Lexi, um, I use the she, her pronouns, um, and I'm the junior captain and CAD captain of the Fire Bears, and I'm also the junior this year. Oh, and I'm the cheer captain. That's also important. All right, so we're team for 846, Fire Bears from Roosevelt and Set. So I guess I'll talk about uh, LGBTQ+, so first, it is a student-led organization that we are a part of, so we are a partner team. Um, and we signed up and are on their website. Um, and as you can see here, the mission of LGBTQ plus of FIRST is to increase queer visibility in the FIRST and the STEM community as a whole by providing resources, both online and offline, to help and educate LGBTQ plus people and their allies. So that's what we're doing here with our seminar. Okay, so. Some people might not know what LGBTQ plus stands for. So we just have uh, the, the letters of the acronym here. Um, so, Annabelle? <laughs> so, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and then plus for um, the, all the other letters of the alphabet that stand for other different gender and gender identities and different sexualities. So um, the main mission of this is to have everyone feel accepted, so to make teams accept everyone. So um, many teams have students who identify as LGBTQ+, and it's important they're accepted even if they're not out to you or your team. You should still just respect everyone. Um, everyone on your team um, should be valued, even if that may, means making accommodations, which we have on another slide. Uh, and this can be difficult to discuss due to people's um, different opinions, but it's important if you can to bring it up and then just to create an inclusive environment to avoid stereotypes, having a no tolerance policy for bullying, um, adapting to new situations with an open mind, making students feel like they can be themselves on your team, addressing the topic with your whole team, and then when you see discrimination, you correct it right away. Yeah, so um, accommod by accommodations here, we mean just small changes a team can make just to make sure that uh, everyone on the team feels safe. So one of them would be like putting in the rules, making sure that everyone is respectful to each other, um, or on the sign-up sheet for your team, uh, if you're registering for the team, just having an extra pronoun section just makes people feel more welcome on the team. Um, and then also, a lot of teams travel for uh, like competitions or going to worlds. So you just need to make sure that everyone on our team uh, is, make, is comfortable with who they're assigned a room with. Um, and that can be important depending on like sexualities or gender identities, that everyone in the room just feels comfortable with who they're with. Um, and another thing is that it's important if you know someone on your team uh, is part of the LGBTQ plus community that you do not force them to come out or uh, tell other people about it if they're not comfortable with it. Uh, that's something that people should choose for themselves personally. So pronouns and names. So many people who identify outside of the gender binary use different pronouns and sometimes a different name than what they were given at birth. So it's important to always use someone's preferred name and pronouns. Um, and then the most common pronouns would be she, her, he, him, and then they, them. And like we said, important to use someone's preferred name, and it is very, very disrespectful to use someone's dead name, so avoid using someone's dead name. Yeah, and dead name is like the name they were given at birth by their parents or family, um, and that they're not comfortable using. Um, so if you are not part of the LGBTQ plus community and you have LGBTQ plus students or members on your team, you can be an ally, and that just means being supportive of your students, um, standing up against jokes or just general homophobia or any disrespectfulness towards the community. Um, 
and just educating other people so if you know about it and just making sure that your friends are comfortable and safe on the team and just treating everyone respectfully and treating them the same. And then things not to do. Um, if, you, if you're an ally, things not to do. So um, don't make assumptions about someone's gender or sexuality based on looks or what they're wearing or how they talk or anything like that. You shouldn't make any assumptions. Um, never using anti-LGBTQ language, so slangs that are used by people outside of the community. Again, don't ever out someone without their permission, and then don't ask someone what their real name is if you know that's not their given birth name. Don't ever ask them if they're not comfortable sharing. And then don't ask people very intrusive questions if they're willing to tell you about their experiences with coming out or whatever. That's okay, but don't like try to get the tea out of them if they're not willing to give it up. So um, part of this is uh, increasing queer visibility in STEM um, because there are not a lot of uh, people, well there might be a lot of people in the STEM community who identify as LGBTQ+, but aren't comfortable sharing it. And uh, we just want to make sure, like, show that uh, the world is becoming a more accepting place and we want more people to be comfortable with themselves if they can be, and uh, it's important to have visibility in STEM so that future generations can then, uh, you know, see role models in that. So, any questions? Thank you. <laughs>